that a little bit better. But uh, what I wanted to do tonight is to to give a a, a response to um, information that was talked about by uh, Dr. Stephen Harrington at the last meeting about uh, our ratios of out of district, uh, uh, not say out of district, but out of school suspensions and in school suspensions, but mainly focusing on out of school suspensions. Um, the concern was expressed is that we had a disproportionate number of uh, black and um, uh, black uh, um, black black to white ratio in terms of in terms of out of, out of school suspensions. So. After that evening, I asked for the report and went through it very carefully and did find what was an obvious error, it was pretty obvious that in, there was two different charts. It's a fairly long report, I might have to tell you. It's, it, it includes information about the number of students taking Algebra 1 and how it's distributed among all of the different groups as well. And this is AP courses. It's a very involved and time-consuming report, but there is there is a chart that says the number of out of district. Sorry, out of district. This is one of those words that comes out so quickly in, in uh, it's around special ed, but it's out of school suspensions for students with disabilities and for students without disabilities. And what I could see is that the, the two charts have identical numbers. I didn't know at the time which, which of those two numbers were actually correct. So we did look into the data for 11-12, and that was a mistake. Um, it was just an oversight in terms of the data that was um, there. Um, so when we looked at the act, we're taking a student by student, looking at the number of out-of-school suspensions, we actually found that we had a slightly higher number than we had reported. The report that had been submitted said there were 96. Now, one thing I, I do want to stress before I go into any more detail about this is that we're talking about a very small sample of students. And when you have a small sample, and those of you who know statistics, it, it's not very difficult for a, a, a change of a few to really change the ratios and proportions because it's, su it's super sensitive to small changes. So when we looked at the actual numbers, um, it does change the ratios uh, uh, of number of black students to white students that have been out on on suspensions. I look at the data a little bit differently than Dr. Harrington, but it's a sort of a different lens to the same issue. When I look at, so for example, and you have this in your packet, but I hopefully people up that are at home can see this. The change was that with the 111 students, uh, 111 incidents, there were 66 uh, white students 19 black students in contrast to what was reported there was 45 white students and 23 black students which would almost suggest that that is really disproportionate how i look at it is this in this total population in 11 12 3.6 percent of our students, or black students, under the category that we use for the federal, federal reporting. If you were to take that percent of the 111, you would expect that if, if the number of out-of-school suspensions mimicked in the same proportion as the actual distribution of the population, you'd expect that same kind of distribution in the number of out-of-school. So that would, would have us expect four black students being in an out-of-school suspension. In fact, there were 19. So it was five times greater than what we would expect. When the data had been reported, it actually was more like 6.5 times greater. So it was slightly improving, but still of concern in looking at that. When we look at the number of white students in 11-12, which was 77.2% of the total enrollment, 
of the 111, you would expect 86 of the 111 to be the number of stu white students. And in fact, there were 66, so there were less. So it was less than expected. Now, to put this in context, that was a time period um, where we were uh, having a lot of concerns about students that were coming in from group homes and not only group homes, but the other students were coming in that were struggling with the transition into the high school. Because uh, most of these suspensions are at the high school level. It doesn't mean that there aren't suspensions at the elementary or the middle school. There are, but but the the, the, the majority of them are at the high school. And it was, it was about that time um, that we began looking at programs and supports for these students in order to have a better transition into the high school and uh, we did the same thing at the middle school as well but more so even at the high school and so when I look at the data for 1314 this report is submitted every two years and so we'll, we'll be submitting it late December early January so these are very preliminary numbers this is a very time-consuming process but wh when I look at the 1314 data which you have also, one of the things that is very notable is that we've gone from 111 to 55 total for one year. And in looking at that, the, the, the breakout was, we're just talking about these two particular categories, there were 36 white students and 10 black students. Our enrollment has grown over that period of time. Um, but the relative ratio percentages haven't changed a lot, but a little bit. And so, for example, um, for black students, it has changed to being 3.76% of the total enrollment. So if you take that number times 55, you're going to have an expectation of four students. We had 10. So what you're seeing is definitely a change in the ratio, which is what exactly what we wanted to see happen. The same thing for white students, when we looked at, we had 74.4% of the 55, the expected number would be 40, and we had 36. So we're now having, we're seeing a, a more of a parity there. But I think that, that um, what is very compelling and, um, and, and reassuring, actually, is that the, the kind of programmatic supports that we're putting in is having the kind of effect that we want to have. Not only has the total number of um, uh, uh, out-of-school suspensions changed, but the relative ratios are also changing. So that's the good news. Um, I, I have um, been in consultation with um, our town council about what's the process to resubmit the data and he has talked to the um, Office of Civil Rights and they suggested that we just send in the corrected report when we send in the one for 1314, which is what we will do. Um, so I think that it also speaks to, I think that we have to build in a process where none of these reports go out without at least another a set of eyes, two sets looking at them just to see for obvious error, because that was an obvious error when you actually looked at the report. So it was a good exercise to go through, um, and I think it's it's definitely a concern, and I and I appreciate Dr. Harrington bringing it to our attention. Um, it's certainly been a concern when I, I've talked to the high school principal about it, and I know that this has been on their minds for quite some time and certainly on the deans, which even precede uh, Dr. Janger, it has been on their minds in terms of how we support these students and also at the same time have a very, um, you know, the, the appropriate consequences and, and, and have a smooth um, day at the high school. And I think that there's, that is all improving. So I'm hoping as we see the next report two years out, we're going to even see more improvements as we go forward. Uh, just for clarification, I don't think you told the viewing audience at home where these reports are coming from. Um, you told us.
this in the email, the civil rights case. This is a report um, that we have to send to the Office of, well, it's the Department of, it's Department of Justice, and it's their Office of Civil Rights, and it's a very long and involved report that is given. That's probably why they do it every two years, because it does, it is so time consuming. And, and for example, um, this is the report. There are categories for AP exams. You go through your AP exams and you have to break it out by how many white students, Asian students, black students, Hispanic ta are taking AP, AP and what their scores are. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, it's very involved report. Um, so this goes, this goes to the federal government and it is posted on their website. Okay. And all school, all school districts do this. This is done nationally, absolutely. And so the data where we're talking about the nationally, um, what the number of, that, that black students are three times more likely to be in an out of school suspension comes from this, this database. And it is, that represents a, a national. So when we're saying that ours is higher than that, that is a concern, so we need to look at it. But it, it is also, um, it also a situation where Arlington hosts a number of group homes, and I think that we have done a better and better job every year of helping um, our, these students adjust to uh, Arlington High School. Do we keep records of reason for suspension? Of course. Is that something that you look at? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. It, every, everything is logged, it's, and, and actually with very complete data. Mm -hmm. Yes, question. What if uh, a student is of multi-racial background? How are, is he or she? That's actually a very, an excellent question, and that's one that has been um, increasingly an issue in terms of the categories. Um, right now, you just sort of select one of the others, but we don't have a multiracial, and people have talked about that needing to be more of category as we go into the future. Yeah. I, and I know Mr. Stuckman probably has some thoughts yeah. on that one too. Yeah, and the other question I have real quickly, is the, is the designation um, in this uh, preliminary data sheet of out of school suspensions only one or more than one? Do you mean only one day or more than one day? It says annual report mm -hmm. for a whole school year. Okay. So we had in the in the 13-14 school year, our preliminary number said we had only 55 district wide. No, no, no. Just the, oh. um, it says only one. Or oh, four. oh, oh. I see. They, they yes, they have to break it out that way. How many students had only one um, a suspension oh, oh, and okay. not get suspension? It's not the number of days. You, you don't get that in the report at all. So somebody might have a two day, five day, ten day. Um, but the other one where it's more than one is it's uh, students who get multiple. In the same year. In the same year. Okay. And what you will see, which is interesting in the data, is that there's noticeably fewer students um, that have a, only one day. I mean, only one instance. Most of the time, the majority of the students involved in out-of-school suspensions have more than one. Yeah, I, just because I've been on the business end of compiling this report, fortunately I haven't had to do the test, but I've been involved in sort of helping out and overseeing it. This is a very complicated report to produce, and it doesn't align to the way we report in Massachusetts because we do have uh, 60 four different racial categories we can do when, when reporting to the state because uh, you are allowed to check multiple boxes and it's reported back that way, but the feds bring it back down to, to a different set, of category, uh, different set of categories. And a lot of things, that we, how we report in Massachusetts doesn't align to what we're doing. And instead of reporting this electronically where we can go and hit a button and get a report, uh, for the most part, there's a lot of hand labor in terms of doing the research and figuring out what's going on in order to fill into the category. So there's a lot of cutting and pasting and a lot of room for error in this. So it's totally understandable that uh, in, in preparing this report, uh, because
because we don't have a dedicated staff to comply with federal reports that take a lot of time. People have to do that in addition to their regular duties. It's, it, it, it's, it's an onerous process, and I just wanted to make that comment. Uh, I appreciate the fact that we, uh, we looked into the data, we clarified it, and it, it's such uh, viewing what the true data is, is unsatisfactory, and we're working towards uh, aligning it to better reflect our, our student population. Mm -hmm. I just want to say um, that, as you all know, this is a national issue, and there's national attention that's being put onto, and I, and I think I think that's a really good thing. I mean, I think it's a good thing that nationally we're asking these questions. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and and I say that Arlington is, is taking this seriously and, and will work towards making sure that the same kind of offenses get the same kind of mm -hmm. consequence. And it's not just the bad thing. Mm -hmm. I do. All right. Um, actually, the next um, 